time being, maybe for over a few generations. But we have to think not about our comfort, as I say, in a verbal sense of how materially comfort and how we are living right now. We must think about how this planet is going to be left for future generations, but more importantly, the food web for the next generation. So it's just climate change deals with our entire food web, okay? Whether it's on land or sea. And then when you have those who have the verbal sense of value destroyed, as I say, valuable farmland, and there are whole farmers where everything from CAFOs to agri agribusiness, by the time you put these things all together in this current regulatory climate, you know, we are at a very serious, serious crossroads. So as a scientist, I am deeply alarmed, but also as a man of faith in the old traditions, I am deeply alarmed. So when you start to see these signs, you know, and this is why people say, come on, Larry, you're a scientist. You don't believe in signs. I go, yeah, we're seeing them. We're seeing them. We're seeing them real time. It is time for us to move. Now, I'm not going to do the Moses thing saying we're going to be moving to a better land or a better place or to the promised land. <laughs> the Lord has given us this land here. You are right now the stewards right where the Lord put you. This is the land that you must save. And he's giving you the choice in your hands. We want the revelation of what can be or what can't be. But the choice is yours. The choice is ours to decide whether or not we are going to roll back those forces that are invested, as they say, in treating our planet our species as a verb, as property, as something that you can buy, consume, and sell, or the noun of our traditions that we preserve and protect this for not only ourselves, but for posterity and for generations to come. But not just for ourselves, not be selfish, but being stewards of creation, being stewards in best environmental stewards, realizing, as John Muir said, it's all connected. Realizing, even as Dr. King from Human Interactions, that we are all connected. And this is not a black thing or a white thing. This is a thing that we will all go down together if we don't pull together to build one big movement. So I'm not here as a Sierra Club president or a Democrat or Republican. I'm here as us building that green movement, that deeper shade of green. And they say, what party are you, red or blue? No, I'm green, a deeper shit. I'm an Eagle Scout. I was out there just from my childhood, I saw things that maybe I cannot articulate, but I can see how nature interacted. But more importantly, in interacting with nature, it, it made me at peace. I don't know why. But this is how we are connected at the most organic level. But I can come from, from as, say, as a veteran, come back to this, I can be healed by this land. I can be connected. In fact, I was down to Congaree today. It was warm. Bob, was it warm? Bob, where's Bob at? Bob in here? He done slipped out. <laughs> Bless his heart. Uh, <laughs> there you go. But I tell you, I was down there looking at a lot of those private dams. Again, those people who had that, the value that they can own it monetarily without the norm of looking at, you know, really being a steward of that land. So those private dams made it may have made it perfect for their personal pleasure because they had a wealthy home and, and a place that they could paddle out in front of. But when that private dam failed, it destroyed a lot around it. Right. It destroyed a lot around it. And it's what happens when you have poor regulations, poor flood control systems, people thinking only about themselves but not thinking about creation. <laughs> now, we can blame it on that landowner, but I'm not going to stop there because that's something that if we all pull together as a society of people, we could pass legislation to correct that. And that's not Democrat or Republican. That's just common sense. That's just common land stewardship. But while I was down in the Congaree looking at that damage and devastation, one just couldn't help me in Southern Point. Because I swear to God, I wish I had a fishing pole. <laughs> you know, you, you just can't trust a, you know, a, a person that's connected to land and a water hole and, and a little warm weather. And you just, I, just, I just had it. it, it and they were trying to catch up. They said, where are you going? I said, I want to get in that water. But no, serious. 
you know, the Congaree used to be part of a, you know, a few thousand miles, well, almost like, what is it, about 25 million acres, you know, a wetland forest. Mine, so that a few could make newsprint and newspaper. Trees that were thousands of years old, chopped down in an instant. Chopped down in an instant, but more importantly, the value of those trees with regards to flood control for this community, just beyond that. You can see that short-sighted verbal sense of value, maybe clear-cutting something beyond what one needs but more importantly, putting everybody else in the surrounding web that's connected to that land. You may own that land, but that land is part of a bigger web. And when you strip that away, how many people fall through? That web doesn't catch them anymore. And now communities are flooded.